Hi everybody, welcome to a quick how-to in Unreal Engine 4. Today we're going to be setting up a timeline and uh, showing you how to use that as well as giving you a couple quick tips on uh, some pitfalls about timelines. So, we're going to go ahead and add a new timeline. And a timeline is just a good way to drive some functionality with a timer. So this is a five second timer. I'm going to go ahead and bring it down to three just for the sake of keeping it short. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to... I don't know why it opened it, but I'm going to rename it. Um, our timeline. Alright, so it's a three second timeline. And we can play it. We can play it from the start. Um, and as it plays, it will update. And when it's finished running through its time, uh, it will finish. We also can stop it, reverse it, reverse it from the end, and we can set a new time. So if we want to give it a different time than three seconds. So uh, we'll go ahead and just drive a simple function. Let's go ahead and print uh, something out. Print string. OK. And we don't want to do hello. So let's go ahead and add a variable. We'll just call it number. And we'll make it in. Uh, we'll, make it a, we'll make it a float type. And we're going to go ahead and also get this set number two we'll go ahead and set it to whatever number was uh, plus plus one uh, this probably doesn't need to be a float this could probably be an int since we're incrementing in even numbers but and we're gonna go ahead and set the, that and then we're going to go ahead and print it out so what's happening now is as we update we're going ahead and setting this variable number to whatever it was before which defaults to uh, 0 plus 1 and then we're gonna go ahead and print that out and then when we're finished let's go ahead and print out done with an exclamation mark um, so we have this timeline that as it's running will print out a number and when it's done it will print out done and now we just need to play the timeline um, so for that we'll use event begin play and we'll just get a reference to this so it's called our timeline so we'll get our timeline and then we'll just go ahead and play from start there we go and we'll go ahead and do this and this is all by the way this is in the thing doer uh, class here, the object, and I've gone ahead and stuck one of those down in the map here so that event begin play will get triggered right as we start the game. And we'll go ahead and run it. And there you go. And we get up to 353 in three seconds, so uh, that looks like we're getting... Oh, I don't want to do the math there, but that's what we got out of that. So you'll notice that it doesn't update every second, it updates, I believe, every tick. Um, it fires this off. So if you think that you've got a five-second timer and you want something to update five times and you're driving it by this, you are in trouble uh, because it's going to update a lot in five seconds. In three seconds, it did 353 updates. So it ran this 353 times in those three seconds and then printed out done. Another pitfall to watch out for is that if you're calling this out of a function, um, sometimes or sometimes from elsewhere uh, it will you'll notice that the updates aren't firing and that this isn't firing and it's because sometimes you need to set it active and I'm not sure exactly what the cases are but if you notice that your timeline isn't driving the functionality that you want to have uh, it driving you can always take the timeline and at event begin play set active and set your new active to true and that'll just make sure that that's an active component of your blueprint here that can be used and called elsewhere. So if you're calling it out of a function, you'll, you will need to do this. And I think there's a few other cases. Um, there's other useful things about timelines. So if you jump in, you can add a float track. And this is really, really useful because you can then add some keyframes. And we'll go all the way over to the end here. We'll add a keyframe here. And this keyframe will set to the end. And this one will set to zero. And the value will go between, let's say, one. And then you can center up by hitting these buttons. And so now we have this linear flow track that goes between 
uh, 0 and 1 as the timeline progresses over the length here. And what you can do with this is actually drive functionality using these float tracks. And I'll talk about a little bit about that and how that can be used with LARPing later. But for now, we'll just go ahead and instead of setting number to whatever it was before, we're going to go ahead and set it to this float track. So remember, the float track runs between 0 and 1 over the course of three seconds. So what I expect to see here is that number will never exceed one and will start at zero and then have all of the decimal range, however many updates, uh, up to one as this is going and then print done when it's finished. So let's go ahead and run that. There we go. So we now see that the updates here are being driven by the value of this, which is determined by the time. So at, say, 1.65, the value is going to get set to 0.55, and so on and so forth. And the way that it does this is it checks the time at the tick, so it may not be 1.8, it might be 1.8006 or something like that, and it's going to be like 0 0.605, whatever. Anyways, that is... Uh, some things you can do with timelines in a nutshell. I hope that was a helpful video to you. If you guys have any good ideas, let me know, and I'll try and make quick how-tos uh, in response. Otherwise, please like, subscribe if you thought this was worth it, and uh, I'll see you next time.